language of an adult nature. Listener discretion is advised. Views and opinions expressed on the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Alt Talk Radio dot net. Brothers and sisters! Brothers and sisters! I don't know what this world is coming to! Hey yo, check this out, this is Flavor Flav And if you want the whole truth, and nothing but the whole truth So help the whole truth Hey yo, you better listen to Don K, baby Don K! What's going on guys, and welcome to another great edition of the Dante's Boxing Nation show I am your host, Dante And once again, we have another great show First things first, let me go ahead and um, give shots out to the Box Fan Expo September 12th Come out, support, come out and meet and greet all your favorite fighters. I'm telling you, everyone is going to be at this event, this Box Fan Expo. My man, including not just the boxers and the trainers, but also my man Boxing Ego is going to be there. I'm going to be there. So come out and hang out with us September 12th out here in Las Vegas, the same night that Floyd Mayweather fights. So first things first, let me go ahead and introduce my man, always repping the team, Boxing Ego was cracking. What's up? Ready to talk some boxing? Let's get into it. Edumacation time. So uh, we, we're also going to most likely have um, some some other um, guests calling in. They said they'll probably be calling in 10 minutes late, but um, we're going to do it EPMD style, just me and my man Boxing Ego for now. So uh, let's get it, man. So Boxing Ego, um, first things first, we don't have to speak a whole lot on it. The, um, you know, Kovalev versus Mohamedy, um, we already knew it was um, weak competition for Sergey Kovalev, and we know if um, Sergey um, was on a, a coincidental list, a lot of people would be complaining about this fight, but that's a whole other story. But, um, you know, he, he destroyed him as advertised, as we expected. Uh, I mean, um, what do you think? I might as well tie this in with the undercard fight because uh, after watching that, I personally would rather see Gonzalez versus Kovalev instead of a rematch of John Pascal against Kovalev, because especially after Kovalev just said that he believes that Canadian fighters are terrible, et cetera, et cetera. So why would he want to rematch with Pascal if Canadian fighters are supposed to be so terrible? So what would you prefer to see next for Sergey Kovalev, Boxing Ego? Uh, I'm always, like, I'm a, I'm a pretty cut and dry, like, easy to read type of person, and I don't really care for recycled rematches unless it's needed. And for, like, you have Pauli Malignaggi, Juan Diaz, there was some controversy there. They did a rematch. That's cool. Pacquiao, made, or Pacquiao and uh, Marquez, rematches, some of those were warranted. But for me, Jean Pascal, I, I really am not too keen on a rematch because I don't think it has to happen, nor did I see anything in the Pascal-Gonzalez fight that lets me think that Pascal will beat him. He Good wasn't point. aggressive enough, mm-hmm. and I thought Gonzalez got robbed in that fight. So, for me, I'd rather see, even though he quote-unquote lost, I'd rather see um, Gonzalez face Kolev, fresh blood. Um, he's pretty big for the weight he looked He looked like. He had a good chin, and um, I thought he won the fight with Pascal anyway. So, he's the rightful winner in my eyes. So, I'd rather see that versus Kolev than Pascal. Mm-hmm. And, and, and this is... This is once again, um, you know, classic, you know, Russia versus Cuba. Like I told people in my video, you know, the people who win the majority of gold medals in boxing Olympics are the the Russians, or I should say the former Soviet Union teams, and the Cubans. So it would just be great. As far as I'm concerned, Gonzalez is still undefeated. So, you know, it would be great to see, like you said, a guy who's the same size as Kovalev. They both have the height. They both come forward. We know that Gonzalez can take a punch. I truly believe that Gonzalez was more comfortable taking Pascal's punches than Kovalev was when he was taking Pascal's shots. You know, so I really hope we get to see that fight. I hope, you know, that um, this fight is perceived the same way Pernell Whitaker versus Chavez was because that was a that was a highway robbery as well where it was um, basically um, ruled a, a draw a majority draw. One judge had it for Pernell Whitaker, and then the other two judges had it a draw. But the funny thing is, back then, 
you know, all the writers and all the media, they all agreed that it was such a robbery that Chavez at the time was considered pound for pound number one. Pernell Whitaker before that fight was like number seven or something like that. After that fight, they, you know, they th they catapulted um, Pernell Whitaker to number one, and they basically reversed, you know, um, the tides and and put uh, Chavez down somewhere in the bottom top ten. So um, yeah, I, you know, with all that rambling, I would love to see G uh, Gonzalez versus Kovalev in the next fight. So um, yeah, with with that pretty much out of the way, those are the fights that I've seen. And um, once again, let me go ahead and say congratulations to my son for, you know, it was a long week tournament that he had, the National Junior Golden Gloves. You know, he made it all the way to the finals. And like I said before, he was off for a whole year and he was fighting at a heavier weight because he was trying to, we were trying to get him down to his natural weight, but we didn't really train for that long. So we ended up fighting at a heavier weight. And let me tell you something, when these, when these kids or, you know, making that transition from, like, 12, 13, 14. That's when they start growing. So he was fighting against kids that looked like they were 18, 19 years old. And and, and the kid that he fought in the finals, this kid was, was giving other kids standing eight counts, and he was dominating them. You know, my son went in there, won the first round, and then, you know, the, the, the last two rounds were kind of close. You know, I'm not saying it was a robbery. It was, a, you know, the guy deserved to win. But it was a lot of experience for my son, so congrats to my son on that. But anyway, man, I, you know, let's get away from that, and let's go to um, some more boxing news, Ego. So um, Amir Khan, Amir Khan just recently said he got contacted by Bob Arum, and, or I guess Bob Arum contacted um, Amir Khan's team, and he's saying that he wants to make Khan versus Pacquiao, or maybe I should say Pacquiao versus Khan, sometime next year around March. I mean, but Boxing Ego, is that even possible? I mean, you got Bob Arum trying to sue Al Heyman. We know that Amir Khan is a PBC fighter. You know, I mean, is it is it likely that a fight like that could be made or is a couple fights left unless he starts, you know, fighting very, very easy opponents, you know? So that's how I see that. The, other, th the other thing I got to add to is um, – I think I've never been there, but it's like a wonderful place, but I don't know the logistics behind it. You know what I mean? Like to get like, are they going to fly ESPN and Dan Rayfield out to buy and all of the media? Because you have to you look at it. The boxing media will keep the sport alive. Like YouTube boxing shows, big wigs and, and the websites and stuff like that. So if they were to make it in Dubai, I just don't know um, what type of event it would be for, American boxing media, like I, I really don't feel everybody would be able to go out there. Yeah. Like, I don't know. I'm mean, that's just speculation, but it just seems like it would be a, um, it'd be harder for some of the smaller boxing outlets to to get there. Of course, he he's trying to pull that old school Don King stuff, you know, by hosting fights in South Africa and the Philippines and all that kind of stuff, you know. So I, I yeah, I guess. I guess Dubai must be offering Bob Arum like some crazy, crazy money because he's been oh, stuck. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's been stuck on this Dubai talk for quite some time now, and that's obviously his dream to, uh, you know, get that big Dubai check no matter who's um, fighting out there, you know. So, yeah, we, we, we'll see, man. We, we'll see. And, uh, you know, I, I want to go back to Kovalev versus Mohamedy because, you know, I just dropped my video box and you go talking about HBO basically trying to, 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 to get people's mind off of a possible Ward versus Golovkin fight. And now they're basically saying that the biggest fight, this is at least what Max Kellerman said. I mean, of course, uh, Jim Lampley corroborated. What I thought was interesting is while Jim Lampley and Max Kellerman, they only brought up Kovalev versus Ward, the only person who, who basically alluded to also wanting to see Ward versus Golovkin was Bernard Hopkins. He was the only one that said, well, there's some good fights at 168, too, and Golovkin is talking about moving up to 168 and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So, I mean, my whole thing, Boxing Ego, is when, when it comes to HBO trying to do stuff like this, basically saying that they would prefer Golovkin not to fight the best top two pound-for-pound -pound fighter in the world, is this supposed to be a cool thing now that now it's okay for fighters not to step up in competition? 
I mean, like I said, you have someone like an Errol Spence who gets criticized for calling out, you know, good competition like Keith Thurman. But then at the but on the flip side, you have Andre Ward who wants to fight Golovkin. Golovkin is not too crazy to fight him, and they defend him for not wanting to fight him. I, I mean, I mean, what's your take on this whole situation? Why should Ward fight Kovalev? Why should he move up and wait fight Kovalev, who's not as big of a draw as Golovkin? We seen that last night because there were a lot of empty seats in there at the Kovalev fight. So why should Ward, who's been chasing Golovkin for two years, all of a sudden pass him up and fight the guy who has a smaller name? Um, that it's a tricky question. I, I have no problem with Andre Ward versus Kovalev. I think it's a oh, me neither, fight. me neither. It's a fight. See, this is a big when it comes to the media. The media wants to build certain fights, and they're like, "No, it's not ready, it's not ready." But the fights, they want to rush it. To me, I talked to Ward's team, and they told me he can make 168 still. He was testing the waters off of a long layoff in his last fight with Paul Smith, who came in overweight and miss weight twice. Um, so it, he's flexible. And, and a lot of people have this misconception that Ward has no options at 168. In my opinion, maybe when he fought Edwin Rodriguez after he beat him, that was kind of the case because the 168, there wasn't really much threat that he hadn't beat as super middleweight. But I don't think that's the case currently. You had James DeGale, who just put on a star-making performance. He just signed Al Heyman in uh, his fight with Andre Durrell. I think that both of the Durrell brothers are good fights for Ward. And then also uh, George Groves versus Badu Jack winner. Mm-hmm. And that would be for yeah. a title, a unification. So it's just funny how, like, certain people want to stick around their division and unify, like Golovkin, and people say, oh, that's a good idea. And then people like Ward, there's options for him to unify with James DeGale, Groves, Jack winner. And, and they're like, oh, no, he needs to move up to fight Kogolev. Now, again, I have no problem with Kogolev fight, but – if we're talking about rushing a fight, um, you could say that that fight isn't isn't as ready. You know what I mean? Because he doesn't even we don't even know if, if he's going to move up or not. And yeah. again, there are some people there. There's only a few names, the ones I mentioned at 168 for Andre Ward. So it's just funny to see HBO and different outlets uh, push their agenda and what they want to happen. Mm-hmm. Like you didn't hear him say a peep about Ward versus uh, Triple G. And obviously, I know the David Lemieux fight just got signed, but I never really heard them prime and prep that fight. Yeah, yeah. They, oh, yeah. They, they're not too crazy about a Ward, you know, versus someone like a Kovalev, even though I know Kovalev is like 175. But if we know if, the, if Kovalev was 168, they wouldn't really, really be talking too much about that fight. I don't believe. But um, y- like I said, the whole thing is I do want to see Ward versus Kovalev. It just obviously makes more sense. And even Dan Raphael, who we know is not too much of a big fan of fighters on a coincidental list, even he said it makes way more sense for Andre Ward to wait for Golovkin to come to 168 since Golovkin already said he's going to move to 168 and fight the much bigger Chavez, Froch, or whoever. It makes more sense for Ward to fight Golovkin first, then move up to 175 as opposed to moving up to 175, fighting Kovalev, then moving down to 168 and fighting Gennady Golovkin. It makes no sense, you know. But um, when it comes to – And the funny – Go ahead, go ahead, man. I was going to say the funny thing is, again, if you look at the double standards in boxing, with certain fighters, they'll push them into the max competition – because as far as I'm concerned, I'm a Bay Area dude, but Ward for Kovalev is a dangerous fight for both, and it's a good fight, and it's a very close fight, you know what I mean, on paper. But you look at, like, a fight like David Lemieux, Triple G, that's not that's not a, that's not what Ward Kovalev is, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, of I course. Think it's, there's, an element, there's an element of danger, but I think Triple G is going to easily, not necessarily easily, but I think he'll clearly pull it off. David Lemieux has power going for him, but he's also been stopped. Versus mm-hmm. you look at Kovalev and Ward, they're both undefeated. Neither one of them has been, has been stopped as pros. So it's funny how people will push that fight, you know what I mean, the fight with the two undefeated guys, and say other fights, lesser fights, need more time to build up. Exactly. And and the thing is, like, like I keep telling people, man, I practice what I preach because when Adonis 
when everyone was talking about Adonis and Kovalev fighting, you know, regardless who I thought would win. Matter of fact, I always leaned towards Sergey Kovalev to beat Adonis. But I still wanted to see the fight. I still wanted to see Adonis versus Kovalev. Why? Because they were the two biggest fighters in that division. Like you said, there's not that much of an element of danger when it comes to, to, to Golovkin versus Lemieux. And, and this is what's so crazy with the fans. They are happy when an opponent only has a 20% chance to beat Golovkin or he has a 30% chance to, to beat Golovkin. But they don't want to see a 50-50 fight. They don't want to see, and, and certainly not if that opponent is on a coincidental list. You know, so, but they're okay with Golovkin fighting smaller guys like Canelo and Cotto. They're okay with, with him fighting, you know, smaller guys like Floyd Mayweather. But, I, it, you know. That's, that's my point. That's my point. Some people want to push the tough, the toughest test possible for certain fighters, but other fighters, they can be guided slower. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? Yeah, and yeah. And with me, I'd rather see, like, to me, truth be told, at this point, if they both were to retire, Ward clearly has a better resume than Triple G. Of course. So, to me, he's proven more at this point than Triple G has. Triple G's a hell of a fighter, but Ward has proven more. But, again, in boxing, only in boxing do you get people who want to see the more proven guy constantly face the tough test after tough test, as if he has more to prove when the other guys who have done less in the sport should be the ones with more to prove. But they always pick the people who are at the pinnacle, high on the top pound for pound list, and they're the ones that allegedly have to take the tough test after tough test and keep showing and proving their worth when they've been doing it. Yeah. And, and, and you know, it's so funny you say that, Boxing Eagle, because, of course, that, you know, leads us to, to Floyd Mayweather and, you know, him. You know, they basically say Floyd Mayweather has to fight ridiculous competition back to back to back because he calls himself TBE. But what's so funny is these same fans, they were criticizing Floyd Mayweather about his competition years before he started using that TBE acronym. He just started using that like a year ago. They were criticizing his competition way before he started using that TBE. And I want to bring this up because it's interesting. I remember I was doing um interview. I was interviewing, who was it? It was, um, it was, uh, Rudy Hernandez, uh, the the late uh, Janelle Hernandez's um, brother who trained him. I was interviewing him. He's a big believer in Golovkin. You know, he was telling me, you know, oh, he's going to, you know, he's going to beat everybody. Nobody's beating Golovkin, et cetera, et cetera, right? And I remember as I was interviewing him, we were in a hotel, and I bullshit you not, this Mexican guy, he walks by while I'm interviewing Rudy Hernandez, you know, he could hear, the, you know, what's, what we're talking about because we were at a fight. I forget which fight it was. And as I'm interviewing Rudy Hernandez, this Mexican guy, he yells out, Golovkin's going to fuck up all of them niggas. That's what he says, right? And, and it's funny because it's funny because I actually wanted to get this dude, you know, on camera. I wanted to actually, you know, get into his head and talk to him about boxing, but he was running out the door trying to go to valet as he said that. I really wanted to get him on camera since he had said that, you know. But um, but the point that I'm making is they are okay with Golovkin fighting w- lesser competition, but yet the fans fans like that are sitting over here saying he would beat everyone. Okay, well, if he would beat everyone, why are you guys so content with him fighting the Willie Monroes? David Lemieux, I mean, that is a step up. Before 33 slash 34-year-old man, you know, who's supposed to be the future of the sport, David Lemieux, that should have been a step up like three years ago, right? That should have been, that should be like a step up for like an Errol Spence if they were in the same weight class, if you know what I mean, right? David Lemieux is a little bit of a step up compared to what fans are trying to say that Golovkin is. They're trying to say that he's this huge-ass monster but we don't see him getting in the ring with these monster opponents. Like I said in my video before, he's supposed to be the big-ass pit bull on the block. But yet at the same time, you fans are protecting him like he's a chihuahua, and you're trying to protect him from the pit bulls. 
That's how you guys are making it sound. How do you how do you sit over here and keep saying that um oh Golovkin is the A side, so he doesn't have to fight the pound for pound number two fighter in the world? How does that benefit Golovkin by not fighting one of the best fighters in the world? You're basically saying you're okay with him not fighting the best as long as he keeps his undefeated record. And with that note, um I, I know we got um a couple more people that just called in. Uh who we got? Hello? I know I know we heard somebody uh, jump in. Hey, yeah, what's up? What's up, Dante? Oh, what you trying to prank call us? You over here breathing hard, and I'm saying who we got. <laughs> you ain't saying nothing. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it started breaking, so I didn't hear what you said. Nah, My bad. It's all good. It's all good. It, did, did Marquise call at the same time? Marquise? Okay, he ain't called yet. He's both both Arab and uh, Marquise, they said they was going to, you know, drop in like celebrities whenever they wanted to. So, <laughs> welcome, welcome to the show, AK. So, um, yeah, man, we we talking about you know a lot of the um, a lot of this stuff going on with um the comparison to Floyd Mayweather being you know held at a high standard because he says that he's TBE, but then yet Golovkin, you know, he gets yeah. to fight whoever he wants, and he's thirty three years old, and honestly, I don't think it mattered if he was forty years old people would still be okay with his level of competition. Go, go ahead and speak on it, AK. Okay. Yeah, we're we talking about Golovkin, right? Yeah, it's all about Golovkin. And, and whatever else is on your mind, we, we talked about Kovalev and, 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 and all kind of stuff. But go ahead, just uh, throw it out there. Yeah, as well, as far as Golovkin, you know, he's fighting Lemieux, but that's not like the you know biggest step up ever. I mean, Lemieux been knocked out before by yeah. a puncher. Yeah. You know, and, and and the thing about him, you know, Lemieux, you know, he, he is a huge puncher too, but it's going to be an exciting fight. But like I said, he's not the biggest threat out there. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm picking Golovkin to win by knockout in less than six rounds. Yeah, you know, that shows you how confident I, I know Golovkin is going to win. The fight. So mm -hmm. that's not really that big of a step up, you know. Uh, but it, it is a step up from his previous competition. But at the end of the day, they still need to fight the Andre Ward of the, the, you know, the world and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, um, you know, when he move up to one state, if he ever decided. But, yeah, I mean, uh, 60, uh, that's a good fight. But um, it's not that big of a step up. No, no, it, it's not. And and especially. See, we're all in. Go ahead, Ego. I was going to say we're all in unison. David Lemieux, it's a fun fight. Like, yeah. It's kind of like. Lucas Matisse, like if you really boil it down, Lucas Matisse versus Ruslan Provotnikov. I wanted to see that, but I know Ruslan's been beat before and got boxed and stuff. Not necessarily the best sport, but this is the same thing. The difference is Lemieux in his last two fights has become champion for a vacant belt. So it, it makes it fun because it's a unification and they both have an interesting style. But it's funny when you talk to casual fans that they want to bring up triangle theories. I hate triangle theories, but they want to bring them up. Like, oh, this person's going to lose because this person did this. But when it doesn't fit their agenda, they don't bring it up. They don't talk about how Golovkin knocked out Rubio, who knocked out Mew, and yeah. now Golovkin's fighting. You know what I mean? Now Golovkin's fighting. He, he destroyed Rubio, he, like you said in your video, easier than Gabe Rosado and easier than Curtis Stevens and all these people. And I'm better than Rubio. Every, and Rubio's the Mexican one where they the Mexican style, and he gave the limbs out of a bunch, and again, they don't bring up the triangle theory there. Like, hey, Rubio, he stopped Lemieux, and now Triple G's fighting him. So I'm not gonna nitpick the fight, but it's just funny to point out the double standards in boxing. Yeah, yeah, I, and 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 speaking of of the double standards, as we always do, I don't understand why do people always try to compare someone who has nowhere near the resume to a Floyd Mayweather. I mean, you can compare Golovkin to so many other fighters. Why do they compare him to Floyd Mayweather? Well, Floyd Mayweather did this or Floyd Mayweather did that. Golovkin has done nothing that Floyd Mayweather has done. Like I said, I really like Golovkin, you know. We're just saying we want him to step up. Like I said in my video before, that is one of the best things about being a boxing fan. Seeing a fighter that you've been watching for a while, you know, fight – you know, beat easy competition, easy. And you always sit there and you wonder, 
man, how is this guy going to do when he fights a guy on his level? When the you know when he's not the favorite, or when you know the odds are extremely close, when it's a 50-50 fight, how is he going to do then? Right? Like I said, Golovkin is damn near in his mid thirties, and we still haven't seen it. And people keep trying to compare him to Floyd Mayweather. Do you guys know what type of competition Floyd Mayweather was facing within his first 20 fights? You cannot compare him to Golovkin, okay? Golovkin has to step up. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, and and I'm not, and this is not an insult to Golovkin, but if we're going to compare Golovkin to someone, I think we should be comparing him to Chavez Jr. right now. And I'll tell you why. Because just like Chavez Jr., and I and I know you guys remember this, Boxing Eagle and AK, re- remember when Chavez was undefeated. When he was undefeated, they was they were protecting him just like they're protecting Golovkin. Now, they weren't protecting him as much as Golovkin, but they were protecting him. Uh, um, I remember Ward was also calling out Chavez. Fans were saying the same thing. Oh, Ward doesn't deserve to fight Chavez, and so on and so on and so forth, right? Chavez had this big-ass, impressive record. He had fought no one, right? Soon as he stepped up and fought a pound-for-pound champion, for the very first time, he got beat, and that was against Sergio Martinez. So if you're going to compare Golovkin to someone, I think we should be more realistic, and we should compare him to a Chavez. You know, and I'm not saying skill-wise. I'm saying resume-wise. Resume-wise is what I'm talking about. They did the same thing with, with Leo Santa Cruz and, and other fighters who didn't step up. Soon as a fighter starts ducking or avoiding, they start trying to compare him to Floyd Mayweather. Like these fighters have fought the Diego Corrales's, the Jose Luis Castillo's, the Manny Pacquiao's, Canelo's, et cetera, et cetera, right? So, you know, that that's once again – the ridiculous stuff and and like i said before you know you will praise golovkin for fighting willie monroe but you will but you will basically discredit or you'll hate on errol spence for what wanting to fight against keith thurman i mean it, it's just not making any sense if, if golovkin is supposed to be the future of the sport he's running out of time he needs to step up in competition and i do believe that that is a fun fight like you said boxing ego Golovkin versus Lemieux. But I'm going to tell you, man, I'm not too crazy about fun fights. I mean, to me, it's cool to put a fun fight on an undercard for a real fight. Because if the fight, like, like for example, when Rios fought against Alvarado, everybody was like, oh, that's a barn burner and whatever, whatever. But, you know, quite frankly, these were two fighters that was pretty much on the decline. I want to see, you know, this is why we like to watch the playoffs. We like to watch tournaments. Because you know that the winner of that fight is going to fight the winner of, you know, the other fight in the other, in, you know, in the brackets, right? But when you got, uh, you know, Mickey Ward versus Gaddy, when you got Alvarado versus, you know, um, uh, Rios, it's just an exhibition. Who, no, it doesn't matter who wins. Nobody is really going to advance to pound-for-pound pound status, and we know this, right? So, you know, that's what it is, man. That's pretty much what it is. And and with that being said, uh, we got another caller. Did, did he hang up? Is that uh is that Marquise? No, yeah. no, nah, nah, that's just me calling from another phone. It, oh, okay. uh, it keeps breaking, so <laughs> yeah, it's I'm just all, trying to get a better signal. It, it's all good. It's all good. So let me let me ask you, um, AK, um, your thoughts on what me and um Boxing Ego was talking about earlier before you um, you know, jumped in. Uh, the latest news is Amir Khan. He said that Bob Arum called him, and Bob is talking about making a Pacquiao versus Khan fight uh, sometime around March. Do you think that's possible with the Al Heyman situation, and or, or do you think uh, uh, Amir Khan is just talking to get attention? W- what do you think, man? So, uh, what fight in May between him, him and Manny Pacquiao? Yeah, March. Uh, uh, Amir Khan said that Bob Arum contacted his people and he wants to make uh, a Pacquiao versus um, Khan fight somewhere around, somewhere around March in Dubai. But, you, you know, like I said, um, it, it seemed like it would make more sense that Aram would probably want to put Pacquiao in the ring with like a, a you know, a Terrence Crawford or even a Jesse Vargas or a Tim Bradley, someone that's already in the top-ranked stable, you know. So, I mean, what do you think? You think – 
You think that fight can happen, uh, Pacquiao versus Khan, or is he most likely going to yeah, fight somebody I'm, with top rank? Well, well, I thought, of course, Floyd Mayweather, if he could get that rematch, you know, um, I mean, that's the biggest fight for Manny Pacquiao. So, to me, of course, that makes sense. Uh, that's a huge fight. But, uh, I mean, and if, if you think about Crawford and, um, you know, if he fights Crawford, that's a more risky type of fight. And it's not going to be as big, you know. It's going to be a big fight, but not as big. And it's, it's more riskier. Pat knows he could hurt Khan, even though Khan does well against softballs. He, he have not fought, except of Zab Judah, who was gunshot when he fought him. Um, he made him gunshot from round one. But other than that, he never really fought a softball that hits really, really hard. Um, so, you know, Manny Pacquiao knows he has the advantage of her and Khan. So I see really Pacquiao. I see, I see Pacquiao taking that fight, you know, yeah. in a heartbeat because, you know, if I mean, outside, like I said, outside of uh, Floyd Mayweather, who will give uh, Manny Pacquiao, you know, uh, not as much risk and is also a big, big fight. Yeah. I mean, yeah, no, there's no doubt about it. Pacquiao's going to take, especially after watching Khan versus Algeri, you know, I mean, he definitely would be interested in taking the fight. But the big question is, you know, can they make a fight like that with with Khan being with, with Al Heyman in the PBC series and Bob Arum is oh, trying yeah. to sue them? You know, I mean, I, I think that's really what it comes down to, you know. So, so Yeah, yeah, I forgot I forgot about that part. Yeah, he's with Al Heyman now. I forgot about that. So I don't know how that's going to go because, you know, uh, he, he's with Al Heyman. I forgot about that for a second. I, I don't know why I thought he was with Oldham but still. <laughs> Yeah, so I don't know how they're going to make that happen. I, yeah, because of that, I, I doubt that fight would get made then. I don't know what's going on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey, I got a question for you guys, a little bit off subject. But, see, this is the thing that, that trips me out with boxing fans. It's like people want to complain. They say Mayweather Pacquiao was born, right? They say, oh, it was just too much running and, and posturing and stuff. But then they have Triple G versus David Lemieux, which, like I said, is a fun fight, an action fight, and people are that it's pay-per-view. So it's like, what do they want to pay for? What's a good fight? So my question to you guys is, is this pay-per-view worthy, or should they have just put it on regular HBO? That's a very good question. Uh, go, go ahead, um, A.K. Yeah. I mean, it's going to be an exciting fight, but, I mean, I wouldn't pay, like, $80 for it. I mean, I'd rather <laughs> see it on free TV. I mean, I mean I wouldn't it's not pay. that much skill. In the, I mean, they, have, they both have a lot of power. But it's not much skill, so I don't, I don't know, man. They, if Falcon was fighting Andre Ward, of course I'll pay, pay top dollars for that because that's the two top fighters in the sport. But for, for it to pay to be pay per view, I feel like it has to be two skillful fighters that, or two top pound for pound fighters almost, or two top uh, fighters in the division. But Lemieux is not really all that to me, so I, I you know, I wouldn't pay pay per view money for that. But I'm gonna watch it. I'm gonna, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, well, I see, that. That, that, that's what confuses me about uh, fans is not you, particularly the fans. Like, people are leaving comments on my channel, and they're saying, oh, Al Heyman's putting together these matches. I don't care that it's free boxing. And then they're mad at Mayweather Pacquiao, which is a strategic pound-for-pound -pound fight with uh, two top two of this generation. Then you get an action fight that's pay-per-view, and you don't want to pay for that. So it's like, what do people want? Like, what what is this match <laughs> to the viewers? Do you know what I'm saying? Because yes. I agree. I mean, they could have easily put this on a regular HBO. I don't. Canelo and Angulo did less than 400,000. So did Cotto versus Martinez. So I don't know what the numbers they're hoping to achieve. It's a fun fight, but uh, I heard a lot of slack about the, the pay per view. Yeah, and, and, and I'll just be honest with you. I wouldn't pay $40 for it. You know, I mean, it is not, it's not a pay per view fight. And, and the whole thing is, I remember um, some guy, and, and this just once again shows you the politics that are involved. It's really, the reason why it doesn't make sense, Box and Ego, is because what they're basically saying is, it's not really what's being done, but who's doing it. That's the problem, you know. So if Kovalev is fighting against a guy, like you said, who's already been knocked out by Rubio, somebody that Golovkin knocked out, you know, in the first or second round, if he's fighting against Lemieux when it comes to pay-per-view, I get comments with people defending Golovkin saying, you know what, these are just haters saying that they're not going to buy the fight. I don't care if this fight doesn't sell at all. I want to watch it, right? 
I mean, what kind of what kind of stuff is that? When do you ever hear fans say they don't care how well the fight does? They don't care what the numbers are. Only when it comes to Golovkin do you hear a fan say something that ridiculous. It's like it's like this person is already predicting that the numbers will be horrible. My whole thing is if you are a Golovkin fan, regardless if you're a Golovkin fan or you're just a boxing fan, don't you want to see the sport grow? Wouldn't you rather to wouldn't you rather a million, two million, three million people tune in? People who've never heard of Golovkin all of a sudden turn the, t- the TV on and be like, "Oh wow, who is this guy?" And all of a sudden be introduced to the sport of boxing because they just seen Golovkin on HBO or even free TV that's not paid subscription. Why would you be sitting over here saying you don't mind or or you want you know this fight to be on pay per view knowing? that hardly anybody is going to pay for it. It, it. it doesn't make sense. It, it doesn't make sense. And, um, and, and, I, and I, I think one, one more thing. I think that, you know, the promoters, they have this all wrong. See, a lot of promoters, I think they look at it and they say to themselves, if Floyd Mayweather can be this big superstar, then, you know, Golovkin is the one that everybody likes. He's the one everyone likes. So he could be a much bigger star. They did the same thing with Canelo, right? Oh, man, we have a Mexican guy with, with red hair and freckles. You know, if if, if 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 Mayweather can be a star, then we know Canelo is going to be a star. So what did they do? They put him on pay-per-view. He doesn't really do well, right? And, and honestly, you can keep putting him on pay-per-view. And now, don't get me wrong, Canelo versus Cotto, that's going to do good numbers. You know, that, that, should, that should do 800 to a million, which is good. But the point that I'm making is they're trying to they're trying to force these guys on the on the public. They're trying to basically tell you this is the future, but it doesn't work like that. You have to deliver. And the reason why Floyd is so successful is because usually when fighters that are that, that are big stars in the sport of boxing, when they reach a certain plateau, you know, and they become, you know, bigger and they start doing good pay-per-view numbers, that's usually when they lose. Like Oscar De La Hoya, when he when he was starting to break you know records, pay per view numbers. Like Mike Tyson, when he was you know getting ridiculous checks. That's usually when they lose. Floyd Mayweather did something that has never been done before. He reached the level of a De La Hoya and a Tyson, and he continued to win, and he kept stepping up in competition. You cannot make a superstar out of Golovkin with no competition. It's not going to work like that. You can only fool the public for so many years, and eventually even some of Golovkin's fans are going to start saying, hey, man, it's time for you to fight someone. I'm tired of you doing the same old magic trick. You know? Go ahead, AK. Yeah. Um, I thought you wanted yeah, to say I something. Agree with, yeah, I definitely agree with you, man. I don't think this is a pay-per-view type of fight. It's playing Rios versus Alvarado on pay-per-view. You know, I mean, it's, it is action-packed, but at the end of the day, it need to be top pound for pound fight or a fight that really matters you know um and i just want to say also i just want to ask y'all a question how many yeah y'all got youtube channels how many of y'all heard people complain about muhammad being an opponent for kovalev you know forget good luck for a second let's talk about kovalev how many of y'all heard people complain saying oh why why good luck i mean why kovalev fighting muhammad what muhammad do to deserve that shot yeah yeah and and how many people are calling him a cherry picker for taking that fight. No, I mean, that, that's a good point. That's that's a really good point. And once again, it goes back to the double standards. I mean, since you just brought that yeah, up. The, go, go ahead, Boxing Eagle. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I'll say what I'll say in a minute. Well, I was just going to say, it's just the double standards in the fighter. And the guy you like, whoever you favor, you're okay with all the decisions that he makes. And that's how it goes. If Mayweather fights Robert Guerrero, he's a punk for fighting his mandatory because Guerrero has no chance or whatever you think, and that's a soft touch. But then when Kovalev is in the same situation, and th- this is the other thing is Kovalev is known as a monster, which he is. He's a destructive puncher versus people say Mayweather is feather-fisted, but you're mad that the feather-fisted guy is taking on a guy who's bigger than him yeah. in a southpaw like Robert Guerrero, but yeah. you're not mad at the destructive powerhouse in Kovalev taking on his mandatory. So it, it goes to show you that people – play the favorites like I, I mean honestly I didn't know much about Muhammad he, he reminds me of uh, Ginobili 
from uh, the San Antonio Spurs that I, I didn't really know about his background. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. I don't know. It's just like I said, people pick and choose when they when they want to apply their logic. Yeah, and we um we have a minute left, and I'll just um close with saying this. Um, I, I'm reading some of the the recent news, and um I'm noticing a lot of you know when it comes to to the professional boxing community, a lot of people from that community they're coming out and they're saying I have no problem with Mayweather versus Berto, uh, the president of the WBC, Mauricio Solomon. He just said that right now. He said you know it's it's no problem with him fighting that fighting um an Andre Berto. Because we've already seen all of the fighters that he's faced. Not only that, but once again, um, like Boxing Ego brought to my attention a couple weeks ago, that Chris Ariola was saying the same thing. This man has already fought everybody that you guys wanted him to fight. And and you said you wanted to see the Manny Pacquiao fight. As soon as he beats Manny Pacquiao, you still complain, right? So what's the difference? If he's fighting against, you know, the eight-time division champion, you know, the quote-unquote fighter of the decade, you complain about that, you know, what's the difference if he fights an Andre Berto or the quote-unquote fighter of the decade? It doesn't matter. Yeah. It, it doesn't matter. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Real yeah, quick, 30 I, I seconds. Say one thing. Yeah, um, you know, Shane, uh, Shane uh, Mosley, for uh, old trainer, you know, he said something on YouTube that caught my attention. He was like, oh, okay, Berto actually haven't earned the shot to fight Floyd. We know that. But Floyd Mayweather earned the fact that he could fire Andre Berto. That's, yeah. all, that's, all, that's all I wanted to say. A excellent point. Excellent point. And I'm going to make a video talking about this. I want to show you guys Sugar Ray Robinson's record and, and show you guys Muhammad Ali's record. And we'll um, do a little bit of contrast. So with that being said, guys, I want to say thanks again for my team, my DBM panel, A-Rab King, Boxing Ego. I'm your boy, Dante's Boxing Nation. We'll see you guys next week. It's a nation, baby.